Baptism, Part 1, The History of Baptism Dear Friend Today, we're going to be discussing the much-anticipated topic of baptism. This topic has many facets and raises controversial questions. My plan is to break this discussion into several parts. In the first part, we are going to discuss the history of baptism. In the next part, I plan to speak plainly and directly, giving you a simplified version of what the Bible teaches about baptism, and will address several of the common misconceptions about baptism, a few of which I will bring up in this letter. In the last part, I will share a Bible study on baptism, which you can use to examine every relevant verse and verify whether what I said in this series on baptism accurately represents the New Testament of the Holy Bible. Let's begin by sharing some much needed history. While the New Testament was still being written, it is clear by what is written in the Holy Bible that every convert to Christianity was baptized. Around 200 AD, a question that arguably should never have been asked arose Do babies who die go to heaven or hell? This question is the first domino that led to the development of the entire Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox systems. It took a couple of centuries, but eventually both of these systems dogmatically declared that all babies who die without being baptized go to hell. The next step towards apostasy within these systems was the dogma of holy orders, which states that only ordained priests sanctioned by the church can perform the baptism of these infants. This effectively locked their church members inside their walls, with seemingly no way of escape. You must understand that, According to Roman Catholicism, the laity or lay members are not the church. Only the hierarchy or leaders constitute the church. The notion that there is no salvation outside the Roman Catholic Church, for Catholics, and no salvation outside the Eastern Orthodox Church, for Orthodox, means there is no salvation without the help of the church's leadership. Here is how that works. Unless you are baptized by one of their ordained priests, you are not baptized. If you are not baptized, you are going to hell when you die. Roman Catholicism locks in this idea in every way imaginable, including the ground a person is buried on when they die. If a Roman Catholic is not buried on holy ground, blessed by a Roman Catholic priest when they die, they are going to hell. So, let's tie these three dogmas together. One. Only Roman Catholic priests can baptize. 2. Unless you are baptized by a Roman Catholic priest, and 3. Unless you are buried on holy ground, blessed by a Roman Catholic priest, that person is going to hell. Hence, the dogma that there is no salvation outside the Roman Catholic Church was born into existence. And it all started when Tertullian, a famous church father, asked the question around 200 AD. Do babies who die go to heaven or hell? A completely separate highway that led to apostasy began when another really smart person asked another really dumb question, a question that, likewise, arguably, should never have been asked. Here is how the question is framed. We know that all past sins are forgiven when a person is baptized, but what happens to a person's future sins that occur after baptism? The answer was the invention of purgatory. Hence, the dogma of purgatory was born into existence. Purgatory is a real moneymaker for the Roman Catholic Church. How? Even after death, a wealthy family can pay for thousands of masses which, as the narrative purports, lessens that relative's time of suffering in purgatory. The whole narrative that branched off these two questions 1. Do babies that die unbaptized go to hell? And 2. What happens to future sins after a person is baptized? grew into the almost unimaginable colossal religious systems of Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. As stated in an earlier letter this week, the Gospel is super easy to understand and very simple. It is only when we begin to examine the religious systems that falsely claim to represent it that things get super complicated and confusing, so much so that only really smart people can truly understand and explain them. Which leads us to the core tenet of the Roman Catholic system, without which no Roman Catholic can be saved, do not think for yourself. Do not interpret scripture for yourself. Do not question the church. 
If you disagree with anything the church teaches, you are a heretic and will go to hell. Sounds super scary, right? This is how every Roman Catholic is conditioned to think. The whole Roman Catholic system is set up like a pyramid. At the bottom are the laity, who are not allowed to think or interpret scripture and must submit to the priest. Then the priest, who is not allowed to think or interpret scripture, must submit to the bishop. The bishop, who is not allowed to think or interpret scripture, must submit to the cardinal. The cardinal, who is not allowed to think or interpret scripture, must submit to the pope. If anyone in this chain thinks for themselves and places anything in the Bible above this line of church authority, they are branded a heretic and declared to be anathema, cursed, and doomed to an eternity in hell. We will continue this series on baptism in our next few letters. Sincerely, Mr. David Michael Curtis